There are some regions of Antarctica where the imagery is just completely baffling. Even the most hardened skeptic would have a very difficult time saying, well, that's just a figment of the camera. If it's a figment of the camera, then why don't we see it across all of the images? Why don't we see it in other years? And why does it so specifically default to certain shapes that we see over and over and over again? There was one region that I had covered in Antarctica, oh, probably six or seven months ago, that had a lot of amazing finds. Some of the ice is amazingly clear. And you can see what looks like different fossil remains coming to the surface. And this would make sense given everything they're saying about Antarctica melting and how there's a warm period going on down there for whatever reason. This area would have been um, perfect habitat. They've even found evidence that it was at one time a jungle, a very tropical warm place. But I don't even know how to describe this particular find. I tried to figure out a way to maybe lead in, and there's no good way with this one. We're going to talk about something that science is quote-unquote science, has discovered recently, but I wanted to show this first. Now, I know it's nondescript right here, this area. It just looks like a ridge, but there's something very weird about this shape right here. It almost seems either biological or man-made. And I can't decide which. And that's why I love having an audience of 112,000 subscribers, because there's no end of um, my audience's ability to look at things in ways maybe I didn't see it before. I'll, of course, give this location, but this region is full of things that we've already identified and discovered for those of you that have been with us for a while. And let's see if we can go to the, one of those right now that actually kind of dovetails with something that quote-unquote science has discovered recently. And give me one second so I can get to it. I believe this is it. Okay, now changing the perspective here with the camera... I looked and saw underneath here what looked like an upper jaw to the left. Here's a lower jaw right here where I'm outlining. Here's what looks like a pectoral fin and what looks like a long body that had some type of a dorsal fin. It's very difficult to see. But when you use a 27 inch high res 4K screen, when you look at this zoomed out, it's very, very apparent that it's a different color. There's almost a brownish tan to it. And everything else, of course, is very stark white, stark black. And then right here, at the very end, you see this very clear opening of some kind. Whether this has been drug out of the ice or come out of the ice in one way, shape, or form, um, because of the melting, maybe it had been um, set in a certain way, and then, you know how when things melt, they just fall in very strange positions. And there's many things in this region that just defy saying, well, that's just what a mountain looks like when it snows and then the wind blows. And then there's some ice. It, I just don't know how you can explain that. But what am I talking about in science? There's a creature that they've known for quite some time named Spinosaurus. And it was bigger than any T-Rex, bigger than Giganosaurus. It was immense, but they found out something new about it. And this is the thing about science. They're just so cockdamn sure about everything, no matter what, right up until the point where they're proven demonstrably wrong. And in this particular case, an animal of this size, given the... Uh, status of the planet at the time would have had to have been aquatic. 
And I think they're going to find that out about a lot of other dinosaurs as well. But Spinosaurus terrorized rivers and river banks as a semi-aquatic animal. They're calling this the first swimming dinosaur. Now, I liked this image real well because it kind of mirrors what I found in Antarctica. A little bit, a little bit in the shape of the head, this dorsal right here. I know it doesn't necessarily have legs like this one, but who knows? Earlier pictures of this creature showed huge rear legs, like you would see on a Tyrannosaurus, and now they've um, kind of scaled that back to make it look a little bit more like a leggy alligator or a leggy crocodile. And the size of this thing, let's see if I can find a, a picture. Here's one of its claws, about 10 inch long, um, four inch teeth, and this will put it on scale with a human being. So this was a beast. I mean, this was a huge, huge animal. And here you can see the earlier representations of it, having these big chicken-like legs with these, you know, little tiny forelimbs, and then the head that's kind of something like a, um, a duck almost, I don't know. And then this huge sail, but the tail was more like what you would expect of a classic dinosaur. Well, now they're saying that this tail looks more like this that it was a swimming creature, and it could have been far longer. Some of the things that we have found in Antarctica, some of the um, different locations where we found marine reptiles, have been immense. One of them was 600 feet long, and some people said that that precluded it from being any kind of a fossil, but who knows what could have been in Antarctica that long ago, the size of it. Given our complete ignorance of our own deep oceans, that anyone could speak to what is or is not under those miles of ice, is just, it's just ignorant. I don't even know how a scientist, personally, can say, we know for sure what isn't there. That seems like that would be just an incredible assumption. But let's go back to Antarctica real quick. So this find was probably six or seven months ago. Um, there are a couple other things in this region. Give me one second here, guys. Over here, this one's a little bit harder to see. There is something between this ridge of ice here and this cavern as you can see right here. It's almost eel or squid-like. You can see here at the end. Some cross between, perhaps. Um, some type of a seagoing serpent that had perhaps a squid-like quality to it. If you're going to enjoy these videos, by the way, you're going to have to be somebody that enjoys a little bit of out-of-the-box speculation about things. Because, like I said, and I'll reiterate, given that we have historical imagery and they don't have anything to directly debunk it, I don't know how anybody can say for sure yes or no. Now here, this doesn't look like much. But to my mind, when I see a ridge like this, very pronounced, and then I see these very specific dark black shadows that are human-like. I mean, when you measure these, let's get out a ruler real quick. Now that shadow is only about 12 feet in length. Now, and of course, what do we know? Angle of the sun, you can easily cast a 12-foot shadow. Some of these are bigger, some of these are smaller. And these look like habitable caves. They really do. 
and every so often you see what looks like some kind of a dark, carbonized disturbance along these paths that take you in and out. And then you see stuff like this that looks like some type of a constructed canopy. And we've shown this over and over again in multiple places. Look at this image right here and tell me that's natural. Or not natural, pardon me. That's just insane to me that that specific image could be wind, ice, rock, and snow. And you could have followed this whole terrace, I guess for lack of a better word, all the way through down to here, where it looks like there's another entry. And you can follow this stuff all through Antarctica in different regions. I'll zoom out and show you. See all this? I could sit here all day and show images like this on terraces. Look at the shadow of this. More 90 degree angles. Here, here, here. That we know don't occur. And this shows very clearly disturbance in the snow, that something is making this. So anyway, I know I haven't done an Antarctica video in a long time. I just wanted to include you guys in what I'm looking at. Here's another one of those much larger canopy cover areas. And you can see the shadow of it. What would shape ice in the form of a canopy? I mean, what would be holding it up and what forces would be involved? These edges, these angles just seem so specific and created. Anyway, 13 minutes, I will uh, let you guys explore Antarctica on your own. And I just wanted to do a video like this to show you guys that when you search through here, you're going to see things, and some, you're going to know they're not natural. But describing them and finding a way to put together a video about it is very, very difficult, unless you have something that's... I mean, an absolute slam dunk. So, I will leave it there. Um, I'll just zoom out and give you an idea, generally speaking, where we just were. About the, I guess, 10 to 11 o'clock region is where we were just looking. And it's one of these random kind of nondescript areas where a glacier has kind of changed direction, for lack of a better term. And you can see all sorts of strange, anomalous stuff coming through the ice. No matter where you look, it's there and it's undeniable. Like, share, subscribe.